All right, what is up my homies and welcome today to Grey Gaming. On today's episode of the Commonwealth Contractor, we are back at the place that started it all, Starlight Drive-In. As impressive as the Starlight Tower build is, it is not without its problems. The sheer number of objects and people really tanks frame rates. Even on modern RTX 3000 Ti series gear, we still aren't able to maintain 60 frames per second here, and while the tower itself is massive and impressive, there is quite a bit of empty space, which isn't always a good thing. Additionally, the catwalks that surround the tower are all separated because at the time of building, I actually didn't yet know how to create wraparound decking. Just all in all, it's a settlement that has plenty of room for improvement. That's why today I intend to do my best to correct all of these issues, so pull up a chair that still has some stuffing and grab your favorite flavor of Vim because I'm Grey, you're watching Grey Gaming, and today the Commonwealth Contractor is fixing Starlight Drive-In. Okay folks, it's time to clear the air and admit that I've been perpetuating misinformation. It's true. While I try and make sure that the info I bring to you is complete and accurate, I've actually been operating under false assumptions for quite some time. You see, I had boarded up the water hole here and was using four water pumps to supply water to the settlement. I did this and defended this decision by citing experience that I had had with a previous playthrough where a settler stepped into the water pit and triggered a combat sequence between settlers who were actually synths, causing a need for a decent amount of remediation as I had to deal with a drop in settler happiness and replacing the dead synth settlers. However, I now believe that the water in the pit was not actually the trigger but was instead a glowing mutant hound that I had purchased from Ericsson. Apparently, every time they stretch, glowing mutant hounds give off radiation, which does trip combat events, so... There you go. Now I don't have footage here of what I just did because I actually did this several weeks ago, but I actually removed the water pumps and replaced them with this industrial water purifier that you see behind me. However, due to the rather large size and grouping issues, I had to both place and sync the water purifier using console commands. This would not have been necessary if I had placed the pump prior to building my tower, but unfortunately, my options were either to spend 5 minutes fiddling with the console, or spend 20 plus hours rebuilding my tower from scratch, so you can kind of guess which one I went with. I'm not proud of it, but it's what happened. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue on with fixing Starlight Drive-In. Our community workshop feels a little bit out of the way where it's currently at on our main services deck, so that's why we're going to move it down here next to the generators where it's already a bit noisy and where it already fits in a lot better with that aesthetic. We just need to grab some of the different workshops, drag and drop them down below, and add in some side railing just like we did at Vault 88, and it should look pretty decent when we're all done. Not too bad at all. Next up, we've got our community commissary. We have the best vendors in the Commonwealth, with Trader Riley and Hargraves, the Brotherhood Scribe, and Smiling Larry bringing the finest goods to the Commonwealth. But we have quite a bit more room than we actually need here. That's why we're going to actually shrink up this area a little bit and gain extra room to build other things on this deck. All we have to do is pull these walls in, and we're good to go. Add in a little bit of lighting, just to make it a little more inviting. And here we are, same amenities, half the space. This tower maintains a full kennel, with golden retrievers, rottweilers, pit bulls, even a wolf. But our doggos have a bit of a problem. They're out here outside the tower where they have pretty much no protection. Which is why we're going to go ahead and move these guys into the basement of the tower. Now they can focus on being good dogs instead of deathclaw fodder. The cafe here at Starlight Drive-In is one of the nicest ones I've ever built, but it does have room for improvement based on lessons learned. We have quite a bit of extra room here that we don't really need, so we're actually going to shrink this up a little bit by adding some diner booths instead of the normal stainless steel tables that we currently use. Pull some walls back a little bit, and we'll be able to accomplish pretty much the same amount of comfort with very little loss of aesthetics. Add in some lights to make it a little more inviting. Replacing our steel tables with diner booths, we're able to accomplish the same amount of seating for half the space. We'll throw our bar here into the middle in order to open up some space along the other wall.
We're going to go ahead and move our drink station across the wall, which will open up a little bit more room next to the counter. Sliding our counter back a little bit, we can actually go ahead and put in a wall to separate the kitchen from the rest of the cafeteria, making this a little bit more diner-like. Add in a couple more diner booths where they'll fit. Now we've got a little bit of a counter extension for us to place a cash register on. This sitting area down on the main deck was a good idea in concept, but honestly it was very poorly executed and it pales in comparison to our lounge on the fifth floor. That's why we're going to just go ahead and redistribute the furniture that is down here in this sitting area to other areas of the tower and free up the space for additional services. Now it's time to move some of our government services down here to the main deck, starting with our brig. Getting rid of some windows that would be easy to escape out of, we can go ahead and make this a little bit more secure. And by removing the amenities from our brig, we're pretty much just going to copy and paste down here on the main deck. Adding in powered gates, we can lock prisoners into our cells. And we can split the cells in half by switching to these heavy gates here. Add in your usual prison amenities, a thin bed, a sink, and a toilet, and you're good to go. Add in a couple pillories here for more minor offenses. And of course add in a little bit of lighting to get rid of all these nasty shadows. Of course we need our sign, and we can get rid of this vault -Tec sign. Next up, we're going to move our classroom from the Government Services deck down here to the main deck. The classroom up here is pretty impressive, but is a little bit oversized for what we need, and honestly takes up way too much space. That's why we're going to switch to a more compact style of desk, which can accomplish pretty much the same thing for half the space. A few finishing touches, and we've got a schoolhouse that'll put even Diamond Cities to shame. Next up, it's time to add the Overseer's Office. The Overseer's Office is pretty basic, it's just an Overseer's desk, some chairs for people to meet, and some decoration to make it look like you're not meeting someone in a dark dungeon. Pretty much just cut everything out here, and copy and paste down below. Add some lighting to make it look a little bit more inviting. and of course our vault -Tec population management system, and we are in business. Fit for any overseer. Next up, we're going to move our nursery, which is rather large and unnecessarily so. We're going to go ahead and put it down here in the extra space we cleared up from the cafe. Adding in a little bit of floor covering for the kiddos to play in. A television set for when the nursery attendant needs a little break. Even a changing table. That's right, we thought of everything. Add in a door. And some lighting, of course. And some plants for decoration. And now we've got a much nicer place for our children to hang out. Finally, our barber up here in the health and wellness deck is a little out of place. That's why we're going to put them in a more relaxing environment down here at the commissary. Now you can get a trim while you're waiting for your mods to be installed on your weapon or your laundry clean. Our government services deck is more or less abandoned and we've still got a long way to go, so join us next time in part two.